Am I the asshole for telling my best friend she needs to hire a nanny instead of relying on me? So my best friend is like my sister and we always help each other out when needed. She has a 10 months old baby and I have always been helping her in every way I can, but lately it started to be a daily thing. We live on the same floor next to each other and she calls me to watch her baby over everything. I need to shower, can you hold him? He is so bored, can you hold him? She calls me like multiple times a day to ask for a favor and now even when I don't reply. She comes to my house with her baby and asks if I can hold him. Yesterday I had some work to do on my laptop and she asked me to hold him for 10 minutes cause she wanted to take a quick shower. I agreed for 10 minutes and that turned into one and half hour. Mind you, her son is really not an easy baby. Cries uncontrollably the moment you put him down and try to play with him. So I am forced to walk for like one and half hour with him in my arms while I have other things to do. Anyway yesterday I felt lightheaded while walking around with the baby. So I put him down while trying to distract him with some toys. He kept crying so loud, but I couldn't take him cause I was worried I would drop him. She heard the crying and knocked my door in a ballistic angry way. Saying why do you let him cry? I explained to her the situation and also told her that it's her fault for not disciplining him and letting him play on his own. I've babysitted a lot of babies in the past and none of them were like this. It's not the baby's fault. It's deaf hers. She was like, I don't like to ever hear my baby cry and I do not accept that you let him cry either. That really pissed me off. So I went on like, then you should hire a nanny that will fulfill all of your requirements. Extra info, nobody of her family, including her mom, want to ever help her out cause of the fact that they can't put him ever down, not even for a second. Also, her husband has a very well-paying job. They can easily afford to hire help. Thirdly, I absolutely do not mind helping her out and I love her baby, but I do not like when it's like a must, and she even gets angry when I don't do it, her way. Side note, I always do it her way. Just yesterday it was taking too long and I was just concerned about his well-being. As I had already fainted a couple of days ago. When helping out someone feels like an obligation I immediately don't want to do it anymore. Am I being an asshole? Edit. I don't mean discipline, but training. English is not my first language. Edit. I really didn't expect this post to blow up like this. Thank you all for your input heart heart really appreciate that. I can't reply on everyone, but I am reading everything. Next time she knocks on your door with that baby, quickly grab your outside jacket and bag, and open the door. Pretend you were going out to the store or something. This is only a temporary solution for when she refuses to get the hint or if you don't know how you should say no. She sounds very selfish and ungrateful, not to mention entitled. I think you need to take a break from this friendship and reevaluate if she's someone you want in your life if she acts like this. Has she always been like this, taking you for granted, you always folding to her? At least stop opening your door when she knocks. Tell her you can't watch the baby, and if she gets upset, block her. There's a difference between helping her sometimes and this. She needs to learn that you don't exist to be another parent, especially when you didn't sign up for it. Not the asshole. You sound like a saint. No one can expect a small child to never cry. No one should expect a friend or neighbor to be the on-call child minder. No one should say 10 minutes and stretch it to over an hour. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Stop opening the door when she tries to hand him off. Or find somewhere else to be during the day so she can't drop him off. Not your baby, not your responsibility. You're not being an A.H., you're being used. The whole 10 minutes that becomes an hour and a half? That's not an accident. Your friend has decided you're her free babysitter up. You need to break that delusion of hers. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. But it isn't necessarily her or the baby's fault he cries all the time a panoply of health issues like reflux, delayed food allergies, can make babies inconsolable like this. My niece was like this till we found the cause, then became a different baby. Am I the asshole for asking my ex-husband to help pay for our daughter's medical testing? I got divorced about 6 years ago with 3 kids, at the time 12, 12 and 14. My divorce decree stated we were to split children's medical expenses 60 40ths. Unfortunately it did not have an age expiry date or specific language about what was included. 
Our daughter, F20, has always had vague and persistent health issues. Headaches, fatigue, nausea, prone to illness, etc. Over the years I have taken her to lots of doctors and specialists and we have not found anything definitively wrong. Her father has always blamed her eating habits and lack of exercise and has never agreed that there could be anything physically wrong. This summer, between her sophomore and junior years in college I took it on myself to figure out what was wrong. I found a good internal medicine doctor who believed there was a problem and sent her off to specialists to get to the bottom of it. Through months of scans and blood tests she was diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease and endometriosis. The internist impressed upon us that we had found it so early that there is little to no damage on her ovaries or thyroid, which was great news. The testing was fairly expensive and I paid all of the co-pays on my credit card. I asked my ex to pay for part of them, since they were for our daughter's health and he refused, stating that we had just internet fear mongered, and that she had made herself sick by not eating properly. He also said he should have been consulted and involved in the process, which our daughter did not want. Am I the asshole for not making a financial plan and discussing it with my ex-husband before the testing? When you were reviewing the symptoms, autoimmune disease was jumping out to me, and that's what it was. Op, stress is a major component in developing autoimmune disorders and women are far more likely to develop them. Medical misogyny is a real thing and it seems your ex is doing this nonsense too. IDK if you should have consulted him first and frankly I don't care woman shrugging medium dark skin tone you advocated for your daughter when no one else would. She will unfortunately need to fight doctors to have concerns addressed. This was a great example for her. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. The internist impressed upon us that we had found it so early that there is little to no damage on her ovaries or thyroid, which was great news. The testing was fairly expensive and I paid all of the co-pays on my credit card. I asked my ex to pay for part of them, since they were for our daughter's health and he refused, stating that we had just internet fear mongered, and that she had made herself sick by not eating properly. He also said he should have been consulted and involved in the process, which our daughter did not want. Your ex is a massive one though. With an official diagnosis how can he still believe it is, was her diet and exercise habits? If this is part of the divorce decree, it may be time to go back to court. I was diagnosed with endometriosis at 15, had a full hysterectomy at 39. I spent 28 years vomiting 24-36 hours straight every time I got my period. You are doing the right thing. No diet, no exercise cures abdominal lesions like endometriosis. Your ex is an ignorant bastard. Not the asshole but it's worth checking in with a lawyer to see whether your jurisdiction has a specific age cut off that will be read into the agreement. In many places that age is 18, but I've also seen it go as high as 21, so in terms of enforcement, you need to check with actual legal counsel. Either way, you're doing a good thing by supporting your child and getting diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, which is often difficult, particularly for women, in a medical system that still struggles to acknowledge them at times. Not the asshole. Your daughter didn't want to include him and based on his prior responses to her complaints he would have dismissed her concerns again anyways. Whether he legally has to pay would be the verdict of a lawyer based on various minutiae within your agreement so I won't pretend I know enough to give a judgment on that front. He's an asshole and you should see what the law provides. In NYS he'd still have to pay until 21. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to mind her own business unless she wants me to skip her wedding? My sister, 27 female, is getting married in a few months. She's been dating her fiancé for a little under three years now. While I, 25 female, have been with my boyfriend for 10 years and we're not engaged but we do live together. My sister started telling me I should get married once I turned 18. She told me it's always so sweet when you can celebrate really huge marriage milestones together. My parents had heart attacks when she said that over dinner with my boyfriend who was also 18 at the time. They were so worried he'd listen to my sister and propose and I'd say yes. They told her 18 is way too young to be married and so is 20 because she said she'd love to be married already. She said we'd made it 4 years and we seemed so in love so she couldn't understand why we'd just date, and she said it like it was disgusting lmao. My parents had to be reassured a bunch of times we weren't getting married just because my sister thought we should. Every few weeks or months she asks if I'm engaged yet, 
She'll tell me how I should be. She'll tell me I should break up with my boyfriend if he's not proposing. I told her I was happy with how things were. She would say I couldn't be. It got worse when she started dating her fiancé. She became obsessed with me getting engaged and I started spending less time with her. But she would text randomly and ask if I was engaged yet. I finally decided to sit her down and say we didn't plan to marry in our 20s. Or not until we're like 28 29ths at the earliest and we're happy. She told me it was so unromantic to plan marriage in that way and I should expect him to surprise me with a really romantic and spontaneous proposal. It got worse again when she got engaged and my boyfriend and I bought a house together. She got a lot meaner about it. Like how I'm being strung along and how fucking stupid I am because look at her getting married within the first three ish years. I lowered contact between us but then she went to my boyfriend and tried pressuring him directly and trying to claim I was so upset he still hasn't proposed, etc. When he told me I was pissed and I told my sister to never do that again. She told me she was trying to help. I told her to mind her own business unless she wants me to skip her wedding because right now her wedding is looking like one of the last things I want to attend. She told me I'm such a bitch for threatening her wedding over her help. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Frankly, I'd skip the wedding. I see a speech at the reception where she tries to shame your boyfriend into proposing. That would embarrass her, not you, and it'll make everyone uncomfortable. Not the asshole brace yourself, the worst is yet to come. One day, she's going to get baby fever and switch to let's get pregnant together and raise our children like siblings. Not the asshole she sounds unhinged. I wouldn't go to her wedding for fear she'd try to force one of those bouquet toss proposals you see on TikTok. Your sister's a lunatic. Tell her one final time that her help is unwelcome and if she wants a relationship with you she needs to understand that the door to engagement talk is closed, no matter how she feels about it. But probably you're going to need to go and see because I'm betting she won't stop. Not the asshole. Ask her directly if she respects you. If, yes, then ask her to respect your boundaries. If, no, then tell her that her wedding and her hopes are hers to have. But you can't be bothered with someone who does not respect you. Simple as that. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. You need to do right by yourself. I had a friend whose sister was like that. Constant when are you getting married? Well friend snapped, refused to go to sister wedding, family and all that shit and then said okay I go. Then she got petty married in the courthouse the day before sister wedding, announced at the sister wedding, because the sister only let married couple sit together. Sister was not happy. The former friend is still married, sister divorced after three years. Am I the asshole sold my car and he died days after? Hi everyone little backstory I sold my car on July 25th to a young man who drove around one and a half hours to come get it. I recently got a Facebook message from a girl. Not sure how they are related, and she said he passed away the day after he got the car so now the car is in a towing lot over one and a half hours from me and since he never switched the title over from him to me the car's still in my name and they are asking me to come to the lot so they can get it out. Am I the asshole for not wanting to do that? I have a little baby and work 50 hours a week and she's rushing me to come so they can get it out. Edit. She said he passed the next day but the police said it was over a week after he bought the car from me. So he had time to switch the title and didn't. Edit. I called the towing company I will be responsible to pay for the car to get it out of the lot because the car's in my name still it's already over $1000. Last edit. I work till at least 5 every day and she's asking me to take a day off or leave work early since it closes at 5. I can't take off time it's my second week here. Not the asshole but you should check with your local DMV. You may be held liable if this doesn't get sorted and the car is left illegally parked or abandoned. Do you have a bill of sale? This sounds really fishy, op. I would reach out to your local police department for advice on how to proceed. You found out from them when he supposedly passed away, but I would be leery of someone trying to scam you here. Print off the messages you have showing sale and go in person to DMV. There is a form you can fill out. This isn't your problem and don't let them make it your problem. Not the asshole. I'm not going to make a judgment because I know next to nothing about cars and selling them. However, you say, she said he passed the next day but the police said it was over a week after he bought the car from me. How did the police know when he died? Did you call the police in that town? 
This feels scammy to me. Did you check the purchaser's Facebook to see if there are condolence messages? My scam radar is going off. Ask for proof of some sort. It's a scam. The car got towed but is probably involved in some insurance fraud where your name is still on the title and your insurance will have to pay out. Contact your insurance company and the local police department and let them know what is happening.